I've been asked recently by a couple of different clients about how to produce a PDF document from a list item in SharePoint Online. And now there are a couple of different ways that you can achieve this, but what I try to do in this demo is break it down into its most simple components, and then we'll build from there. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I have a list of issues. And each of these lists, each of these issues has content associated with it, like an assigned to person, the active status, some comments about the issue, uh, due date, etc., and a client. What I'm going to do is create a flow. So I can come down here to my flows and I can choose this service item to PDF option. I can run the flow, and then if I go to my client documents library, the PDF will show up. This is based on an HTML template that I'm using. So there's a few prerequisites that you have to set up first. The first is you need a list that you're going to pull your data from. The next is create a template. In my case, I've created this simple template. that looks like this. So it has the service record with the title, and you'll notice that I'm using these curly braces to be able to do some token substitution. Then I have the title, the date, the assigned to, and the details. Then I replace all of the main content, which would I call service details, with the detail from the item. My result? is a report as a PDF document that looks pretty darn good. This can then be emailed or sent in any number of different ways to its ultimate destination. But how did we get to that? Well, the first thing I did is I go to my issues list and in the issues list, hit the ellipsis button and then create a flow. At the very bottom of this list, when you do show more, is complete a custom action for the selected item. And that's what we want. We don't want it to happen on change. We want to happen, have it happen when the user clicks the link to go to that selected item. It's going to use our SharePoint connection, and I'll choose continue. We'll give this a name. And once we've given it a name, then we can come in and start working with our flow. So I'm going to choose this get item. And one of the things that I do, I don't rename the entire item because you end up losing track of what this particular item is actually doing. So I leave the get item notation, but I say what it's getting. Like that. Now, after we get the item, I'm also going to do some, I'm going to want a, a unique name. So I'm going to do a, I'm going to get the current time because I'm going to use that to timestamp my file. And then what I need to do is go get that template, that HTML template. So there's a get file content. This is the one for OneDrive, but since we're using it out of SharePoint, I'm going to choose the get file content for SharePoint. And we'll pick our list. And in this case, it's in my templates and I'm gonna choose the simple template to start with.
Now the next thing I have to do is I have to set up a couple of compose actions because I'm gonna pull the contents of that file into those compose actions and then produce an HTML file as an output. So let me do that. Each of these compose actions is going to do a separate replacement. You could do all of this in one step, but I find it's a lot easier to troubleshoot your flow if you do it in incremental steps. So the first thing we're going to do is create an expression, and the expression is going to be a replace. The replacement is going to take the output of the HTML file and then swap it out taking into consideration those text tokens that we had in the file. So for title, we use the title. Now I'm going to get the file contents here, and this is where I get to expand on the joys of this, um, this Power Apps UI, or this uh, Flow UI, because it's covering everything I need. So we'll grab the get file content. And then adjacent to that, we're looking for that title token. And we're going to swap that out with the name value that came from our get issue item up here. So my entire expression now is replace the HTML temp file content where it finds title with the item name. So we'll choose OK. And that substitution is complete. Now we're going to take that substitution and we're going to pass it into assign to and we're going to do the same thing three more times. Now finally, I want to have a unique file name that I'm going to use over and over again because we're going to have a multi-step file process here. So let's use some of the information we already know. In this case, I'm going to simply concatenate together the client with a dash and the current time. Once I've achieved that, I'm ready to create my first file. The action that we're going to use to create the PDF is actually a OneDrive action. So I'm going to create the file over on the OneDrive side. So instead of using the SharePoint create file command, I'm going to do the OneDrive create file command. It wants to know where to put the file, so I'm simply going to throw it into a file folder that I have called clients. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I'll show you why in just a moment. The file name, we're going to grab the output of the file name, and this is going to be an HTML file. So I'll end it with HTML. The content of the file, well, that's going to be the output of this last compose. And that should be all of the HTML with all of the substitutions. I'm going to choose Save. And then one of the only problems with doing it this way is that the first time you trip, you can't use the test functions until you've tripped the action one time. So we'll go back to our issues. I'm going to choose this first issue. And if you remember, we called our flow demo. And there it is, demo create PDF for item. And I'll click Go. It's going to come up and ask me about my connections, and then I'm going to choose Run Now. 
At this point, what I should see is I should be able to go back to my flow and I should see a run history here. Now, when you're troubleshooting your flows, it's, this part is really, really helpful because it shows you the output. So here's the selected item. Here's the get item. Here's the current time. Here's the get file content. And then the compose actions are all set up here. So what you'll notice is that it has the title swapped out, lights keep flickering. Okay, and here it says title, lights keep flickering. But since we haven't substituted created date, assigned to, or service details yet, those tokens are still present. As we move down, we should get down to service details. And this is where we should see everything except for that created date substituted. Here's the lights keep flickering. There it is, created date hasn't been substituted, but there's my name, Matthew McDermott, and here is all of the service details. What that means is that then the create file should have worked, which means all I have to do is jump over to my OneDrive. and browse into clients, and I should see that HTML file here with the unique name after it of the date and time. If I open it, I can see that my service actions worked and it created an HTML file for me. So the next step is to add that create PDF action. Don't you hate those demos where something happens while you're away and you can't tell what it was, but you know it's different? Well, I did that to you just now. You'll notice that created date has been entered in here. I went ahead and added that after set title and before assign to. And then in the assign to action, um, I went ahead and changed the compose action so that it's using the output from created date. So all I did was that. Oh, and I renamed this uh, HTML temp function. But other than that, everything else is just as it was before the break. So I'm gonna add two steps now. I'm gonna add a convert file function. This is a OneDrive action. So right here is convert file. And we're gonna call this, I'm gonna rename it to PDF. And then I'm gonna add one other action. And that is a create file action for SharePoint. Now you can think of this convert file as sort of an in-memory option of, of, of a sort because it doesn't actually save the file anywhere. We have to do that separately. So I'll call that client PDF. Now, what's the unique identifier of that file? It's the output of HTML temp. And the only target type we have is PDF. Then I'm gonna create the file, and the file is gonna go into our client library on our site. The folder path is the client documents. The file name is going to be the output of the file name compose action. And then we're gonna end it with Dot PDF. And I'll tell you, I could be a lot more efficient with flow if it would stop moving my cursor. My file contents is going to be the output of the convert file, which is right here. And that should be all we need to make this work. So our flow ran successfully and it created the file, which means I should be able to go over to my site, to my client documents, and I should be able to see my 800 pharmaceuticals file. And so here's all the information in our file as a PDF. Of course, at this point, you could email it, um, you could have the flow do all kinds of different work. Okay, the last step is just to do a little bit of cleanup because I've got all these temporary files that are loading up my OneDrive. We don't need those. 
So you remember we created this file name compose action and we used it throughout. Let's go ahead and use it one last time and let's delete that document. I'm going to choose the OneDrive delete file action. And the unique file ID that I'm going to get, this is going to be the ID, not from the create file for the client, but the create the HTML file. So here's our unique identifier, choose save. And now what should happen? Well, let's get the file contents from the HTML template. Let's create the HTML file, convert it to PDF, save it as a client file, and then ultimately delete the file. We have an empty client documents file. We have an empty clients file on OneDrive. We'll go to our issues list. So our PDF shows up for our pharmaceutical company. It's all nicely formatted. We go to our client file and it's deleted automatically. So nice and tight, it does the round trip. All it requires is that OneDrive action. So we briefly use OneDrive, then we delete the temporary file and we're off to the races. Of course, if you're gonna do any troubleshooting, don't delete the file, because it sometimes helps to have that file sticking around. But ultimately, you just don't need it. So now you've got the ability to create a PDF from a template in Office 365. Now, what if I wanna create a nicer looking template? Okay, well, what you can do is use a different file for your template. I'm gonna use this new service response file, which has a little bit of body styling and a little bit of additional um, bolding so that it looks a little bit better. Let's use that as our template instead. Back into the flow edit the flow, and all we have to do here is change the template, which means that you could have branching logic that said if there's more than one item, use a different template. If there's only one item, do, do uh, use a, a single item template. It's totally up to you how you wanna run these flows. But what I'm gonna do is simply come in here and change the template file to use the service response template instead. And then while I'm in here, I might as well go ahead and test with that last run. And so this one has a little bit nicer service assembly summary at the top. The fields are bolded and uh, it has that horizontal rule in there. Just little things like that that you can add through HTML to make it look better. So before I leave, I got to give props to Paul Colmsey and his clever workaround site that got me started on this whole idea. Um, this particular article, I'll put a link in the, in the notes so that you can get to it, but he goes on to talk about some other things that you can do using REST services and uh, PDF functionality and Power Apps and Flow. Very, very cool stuff. Thanks.